Wow. What's with all the broken apples? Was that good entertainment? I, I got news for you. It wasn't entertainment. It was education. Did you notice how these martial artists would take a minute before they did the thing they did to think it in their minds? They studied it out. They saw it happen before it happened. And then it happened. You see, everything that we're doing today and tomorrow is designed to teach principles. Even the drummers taught you the power of teamwork, the power of rhythm, the power of preparation, the power of practice. The martial artists also taught you the power of practice, of visualization. visualization. The need that we have to see things happen in our mind before they happen in our world. Now, Kurt talked to you a little bit about our beginning. I remember when he first approached me. He came to a presentation that I did in Long Beach, California as a distributor. About a month and a half later, he said to me, I think you need to be inside the company. And we began to talk. One thing led to another, and I developed a confidence that he could be that part of our business that I could never be. I have skills like you, but I also have areas that I'm not strong like you. In network marketing, we find that by sponsoring people who have strengths where we have weaknesses, we become strong as a team. I knew that from my own experience in building an organization. I looked at the leaders that were my colleagues when I was a distributor. I think of Todd Smith. Todd and I are very different, but we are united in our mission and goal but with very different skill sets. But by coming together, we were strong. I think about Rick Jordan, who was another one of my colleagues when I was a distributor. Very different skill set than mine, but you were united, we were united in our purpose, and so those different skill sets came together to create strength in the organization. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, it's not possible for any one person to build a great organization in network marketing. You see, we call it network marketing because it takes a network to do it, not just one person. Not even really two people, but a whole group of people with complementary skills, united in purpose, united in vision, willing to pay the price in sacrifice and practice, that allow them to do the sort of things that you just saw happen. I heard your oohs and ahs as these amazing feats were done. But do you remember or do you realize how many hours of doing that thing over and over and over again had to precede this public display of success. You don't get here until you've paid the price out there. Now, Kurt talked a little bit about vision. He talked about the goals that we set nearly three years ago when we took the positions that we now have. Our goals were big goals. You heard him tell you that we are well on our path, ahead of schedule, to achieve those goals. But I want to talk to you a little bit about the ultimate goal, the ultimate vision. Let me sum it up. We intend 
to be the biggest, the best, the most dominating company in network marketing in the world. Now, I want to repeat that again so that you really get it. We are fully committed to becoming the biggest, the best, and the most dominant force in network marketing in our world today. What does it mean to have that kind of a goal? What does the vision look like? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to think about who is the competition? Today, there are four network marketing companies that do more than one billion US dollars in sales every year. Just four, that's all. We will be the fifth. We will be the fifth. There are, there are some pretenders, there are some pretenders who think they're going to get there before we do. But do you remember the story of the tortoise and the hare? The hare, the rabbit, moved off fast, but was easily distracted, took paths that didn't really lead to where they wanted to go. Maybe we're the tortoise, maybe we're the turtle. Steady focus, day after day, step after step. But unlike the story, this tortoise is getting faster by the day. We're getting stronger by the day. Today, in network marketing, the number one company in our industry did 7.2 billion US dollars in sales last year. 7.2 billion. Number two did 2.6 billion. Big difference between number one and number two. And the temptation is to think that number one is a big company. Oh, I guess it's big in some senses, number one in our industry, but $7.2 billion is not a big company. In this country of Korea, the number one company, Samsung Electronics, did $100 billion in sales last year. $100 billion. That's bigger. In Japan, the number one company did $230 billion in sales last year. That's Toyota Corporation. That's a big number. The number one company in the world, worldwide, number one, last year, did $379 billion in sales. That is a big number. In fact, that's so big that that company does more sales in a week than the number one company in our industry does all year long. That's big. That's the vision. That company, 379 billion US dollars per year in sales, that company, it's not an oil company. It's not some big fancy company in New York City. No. That company is headquartered in a small town in Arkansas, the southern states of the United States. That company, the number one company in the world in terms of size and success, is Walmart. Walmart. A distribution company. What do we do? We distribute things. Walmart distributes things. Now, who would have believed that Walmart would become what it is today? Fifty years ago, Walmart didn't even exist. It wasn't even alive as a company. And today, it's the world's biggest company. What do you think we can do? Do you think the world will always focus only on lower prices? That was the secret to Walmart's success. Give the customer what they wanted. Lower prices. Cheap things. 
But I believe that the public is hungering for something far more than lower prices. I believe that the public wants, desperately wants, hungers for a better health, for more hope, and most of all, for freedom. This world is filled with people that have no freedom. None. They worry about just having enough money to feed their own family. They worry about having enough money to put their family in a home. They worry about whether they're going to lose their job tomorrow because their boss doesn't really like them. They worry almost every minute of every hour of their day because they have no freedom. I believe the hunger for freedom is the most basic, fundamental, driving motivator in our humanity today. People die to try and be free. People don't die for lower prices. They die because they want to be able to take control of their life. They want to be able to say, I have enough money that my children can have what they need. They want to be able to say, I have enough time to do the things that are important to me, to take time with the people that I love the most. They want to have enough of the things that matter most in this world. That's called freedom. Now, that's what we offer, freedom. So at Walmart, the largest company in the world, a distributing company, they offer these lower prices. We are just getting started. We are just beginning. But we offer this much more important thing called freedom. We offer better health. We offer hope. But deep down in the very roots of our existence as a company, our offering is to offer people freedom. Freedom from worry. Freedom from stress. Freedom from the outside world pushing in on them to crush them down and to take their life away. That's what we offer. And I believe that there are millions who want this so desperately, but they do not know where to find it. That is where we come in. That's where practice comes in. That's where vision comes in. That's where the power of what you've seen this morning in these two demonstrations come in. Now I want to take just a few minutes to share my own journey to freedom. So I hope you'll indulge me. I was born in a very small town in southwestern Utah. My father left school when he was just 15 years old because he had to. His father was ill and so my father went to work to, for, to take care of his own family and never finished even high school. My mother left school when she was 17, never finished high school. But they were good, hard-working people. And I grew up in that small town that became a rich town. My father was a policeman, so we didn't have very much money. But I looked around me and I saw all these people with money and it built in me a hunger to have money. I would ask my parents, can we have this thing? Can we have that thing? And the answer is we don't have enough money. I'm sorry. And I thought to myself, when I'm old, when I'm a dad, I'm going to be able to say, yes, we can do that. I'm going to have the money. Well, when I got into school, I was so busy dreaming 
of what was going to happen to me that I didn't do my schoolwork. And so I almost didn't make it out of high school. In fact, I graduated at the very bottom of my class. I was the last person to qualify for graduation in my entire school class. It wasn't because I was stupid. It was because I was a dreamer. I wanted to see things bigger than the school teachers wanted to give me. I came out of that and I went to work selling shoes. That was my job. I was a shoe salesman. Ninety cents an hour, less than one dollar an hour I was being paid to sell shoes. But I was the best shoe salesman anywhere. And if you came in to buy shoes or even look for shoes, I was going to sell you some shoes. And a couple of guys came in one day and they said, you're so good at selling shoes, we think you could sell something else. Why don't you come and see us? And they got me involved selling life insurance. I didn't know anything about life insurance. My father had been so sick, no life insurance people had ever called on us, so I didn't know anything about it. But I went out and I sold life insurance. I looked in the newspaper every day and I recorded every new wedding, every new birth. And I'd call everybody in the newspaper and ask them if they wanted to buy life insurance. And most of them would say no, but some would say yes. And I became successful selling life insurance. And then I said to myself, I want to be one of those fancy stockbrokers on Wall Street. The people told me, you can't do that. The people on Wall Street, they have masters of business administration degrees. They come from country club families. I didn't even know what a country club was. We were so poor. To me, I thought a country club must be a club out in the country. But I started knocking on doors. I went to every brokerage firm, every Wall Street firm in my city. Every single one. I'd walk in and say, I'm Stuart Hughes, I want to be a stockbroker. And they says, tell us about yourself. I'd tell them and say, no thanks, you're not, our, you're not what we're looking for. Again and again. And so I went around to all of them a second time. No, 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 no. I went around a third time. They said, we know you. No, go away. And finally, one of them said, okay, we'll give you a chance. But the first time you screw up, we're going to fire you. I said, just all I want is a chance. I went to work. I made 300 phone calls every day for 22 months. 300 phone calls a day for 22 months. 100 times a day, people would answer the phone and talk to me. And I would offer my services. 98.5% of the time, they would say, no, thank you. We're not interested in you. 98.5% of the time, I failed. But I didn't stop. 1.5% of the time, they said yes. And on a 1.5% success ratio, I became the number four broker in the world for one of the largest Wall Street firms in the world. Persistence. <laughs> Persistence. The power of staying in it until you get good enough at it that people want what you got. That's where you are today. Some of you are already there. You've reached the point where you're so good at what you do that no one can say no to you. I've talked to a few of you recently. You've told me, without being arrogant or pride, prideful, you've said, I feel unstoppable today. No one can stop me. And you know what? You're right. No one can stop you. Except for you. You're the only one that can stop you. You're the only one. They can't stop you. In fact, they want what you've got. This is a leadership business. It's a business about leaders. And it's a business to grow leaders. And you are the leader 
growers of our company. Bobby talked about Thanksgiving and harvest time. He talked about Korea being a farming society. Well, we're farmers. We just grow leaders. That's what we do. We plant the seed of hope. We plant the seed of freedom. We nourish it. We water it. And then we take care of it as it grows into another leader. One more leader. Two more leaders. Five more leaders. A thousand more leaders. And pretty soon, we have rooms like this in Japan, in Thailand, in Germany, in Switzerland, in the United States. Pretty soon the rooms get bigger and bigger, all filled with the leaders that were growing, building, strengthening. That's our job. We're leader builders. That's what we do. So how are we going to become the most dominant force in network marketing? The biggest, the best, the most dominant? It's by giving people what they want. It's by giving people what they hunger for. The desire to be free. The desire to be a leader in their own life. Not a follower. Not someone that lets other people make their decisions for them. No. People want to be free. They want to be the leader. They want to be the kind of person that decides what's going to happen to them. That's what they want. And that's what we give them. Do you think a million people would want to be leaders? I think so. I think 10 million want to be leaders. I think 100 million want to be leaders. I think the world's most desperate need is for more free leaders. That's our mission. That's our vision. It's not just about the product. We have great products. We have more coming. We're going to be delivering to you great science forever. But it's not just about the product. It's about building leaders. If you will remember this, if you will get this into your minds and never let it go, that your job is to build leaders, not to sell product. The selling of the product is just a process that nurtures the growth of the leader. The goal, the end goal, is to build the people into free, hope-filled leaders. Now my friends, here we are at the very first global convention that this company has held since Kurt and I became the management part of this company. You've seen the other members of the team, they're strong. We're small today. Very, very small. The day will come in the very near future when you'll think back on this little room and you will say, I remember when we were there in Busan and we had that little group. My own downline's bigger than that group now. That's what you will say. Can you see it? in your mind. When I wake up in the morning, you know what I think about? I think about a stadium filled with a hundred thousand people. All Unicity leaders. I see it in my mind. I see literally tens of thousands of people earning so much money every month that they are so free that they can do anything that they want to do with their life. They can sit, put their children in the best schools. They live in the best neighborhoods. They don't have debt. They don't have a boss. They don't have those worries that most people struggle with. That's what I see every morning in the morning. I think about it again throughout the day. I think about it at night. I carry it in my pocket to remind me 
every time I touch my pocket that the vision is big, the power is here, we're going to achieve it with you and the people out there who want what we all want. Now the rest of this day will be dedicated to talking about the power of the product and the power of the business and how you can use these things to grow leaders. But please remember the lesson of the karate experts. They were experts because they practiced, 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 practiced until they could do it with a blindfold over their eyes. Was that impressive? Yes. It was impressive because we intuitively knew what it took to deliver that kind of performance. That's what we've got to become. We've got to become, in the words of the Japanese language, Mushin, able to do it without even thinking about it. Literally, no mind, no thought, automatic, practice, strengthen, practice. I noticed this morning the people from Thailand out in the parking lot. And what were they doing? These are the leaders. These are the top people. And what were they doing? Practicing, practicing, practicing again and again. And that's why if we were to go to Thailand and have a meeting like this, there would be five or six times this many people in the room. There's power. Now, I'm going to say goodbye to you now, and you won't have to watch that video of me anymore, and neither will I. But I want to tell you how much I care about you. This is a special moment for me. The company has come a long way. You have come a long way. But remember this, the best is yet to come. Thank you.